So, we're all standing naked in the forest. Fire burning between us and the eastern horizon growing light. We used up the pile of pallets hours ago and we're through the dead wood that we collected. Even the tree that someone chopped down is mostly burned up. But that doesn't matter much because the day is almost here and we're warm enough for now. Bodies huddling and conversation sparking hot ideas. It's been a long night, a handful of long nights. We look around each other, and as the light spreads down the trees and we begin to gather our clothing, we realize that this is our last night in this place. Do you remember when we first arrived here a few nights ago? When different faces hovered in this circle, lit by the flames. They made space for us were welcoming and warm, ready to show us how to start and stoke the fire. We were clothed then in layers that protected us from the cold and the darkness, but that also put distance between us. We began to bridge that distance with our voices, trying to form and articulate the shapes of our thoughts. We began to expose ourselves. It was pretty awkward at first. For some of us, it's hard to be graceful while you take off your clothes. Sometimes you get your foot caught in your pants and you hop around a little bit, bare bum high in the air, until finally you reach out and grab a shoulder for support. Someone fell over a root, we laughed, and maybe looking around, we thought that other people were better at being naked than we were. That they were used to this. But this vulnerable transition was something we all went through, together. After a few hours, we realized how grateful we were to have this warmth in the night. We began to tell stories, starting with how this fire was first sparked. Friends, our cohort holds a special place in the history of Quest University. We are the last of the first, the last to come to a school that had never actually graduated anyone. We came when the villages were still half empty, when there was room to dance at parties, <laughs> when it was called Capstone, <laughs> when Bear was here. <laughs> we are also the last cohort to be able to say that we shared this space with every preceding Quest generation. Our relationships span the first decade of Quest. We are a connector class. These relationships are what have shaped us most profoundly. It is this time and space that we've shared, meeting and inspiring each other. We have learned that learning is a collaborative process and that growth is much more smooth when done with the support of an also growing community around us. It wasn't the books. It was the people that we talked about them with. In the words of Justin Lee, this place was an open arena for academic smackdown. It was also the gym that let us do the reps and the sparring that made us stronger. We arrived here from different corners of the world, with different histories, perspectives, and experiences. For some of us, it was our first times away from home, and for others, it was the first time that home meant something. We arrived here after school, or work, or travel. We had seen different places and held different views, we had opinions, so many opinions. <laughs> and we were each other's teachers, sometimes overtly, but often in quiet and subtle ways. Graduation is certainly a celebration of what are so often called our individual achievements. But at this point, it is also important to remember that the ways that we have engaged in this learning together, that there has rarely been something individual about this process whether it has been sitting with one another in the learning commons, passing on ideas, collaborating to, to plan events, or just supporting one another as we've gone through stressful times. We've kept each other safe and pushed each other farther. We've been doing this for four years in the wilderness on first camping trips and difficult ascents, snapping into skis for the first time for a lesson from a friend, or going out in search of that perfect pillow line. We've opened up spaces for each other to be creative, make art, share poetry, and music. We've asked each other questions, 
and waited for answers, dug into real shit and shared recipes, brought new foods. Together, we've developed new languages and shared turns of phrase. Personally, I learned what it meant for something to be hella good <laughs> and gave instruction on the proper use of A. We've learned to love and screwed it up. We've learned to play and respect each other. How to hold each other to higher standards and to hold those standards firmly, but not rigidly, because truthfully, there are no rigid standards. We've learned so much from each other here, both directly through our friendships and indirectly through our casual interactions. We're not all best friends, but we are colleagues, peers, and neighbors. We practiced saying hello and cheering each other on. Two weeks ago, we sat in the check in center, passing around pieces of paper to write down what we admire and remember about each other. I didn't have something deeply personal to say about every one of you, but in every single case, there was something that I admire that I could write down. Whether it's the discipline and focus to push yourselves and a team through a season while also balancing life on the block. Pushing yourselves to the podium and bringing back banners and medals to a small school, or whether it's the quiet dedication that keeps you working into the wee hours of the morning in a breakout room, covering whiteboards as the coffee, cu coffee cups pile up around you. Before I met you folks, I didn't realize that people could throw themselves down mountainsides or push boards into the ocean to be battered by waves. We've taught each other about the strength of body and mind that it takes to summit mountains and to wrestle with the deep ideas of long dead philosophers, to go into the lab in search of something curious, to fail in that search and keep searching. We have rolled up our sleeves and opened our hearts to ask difficult questions and the ways that we interact with and care for each other. We have lived and worked together and in that time, we have shown each other different and new ways of being. Sometimes it's been hard. Sometimes we haven't gotten along. We've disagreed around breakout room tables and been frustrated in the villages. At other times, despite our bench best intentions, we have harmed each other. Sometimes through ignorance, sometimes laziness. Over the last four years, we have learned that no institution or community is perfect. But we have taken those incidents as lessons as proof that there is work to be done and that we must keep trying to do it. And even through those periods of struggle, confusion, and failure, we have continued to find ways to live together and to celebrate each other's successes. We have come to recognize each other. These benefits are the result of this time and this structure. We haven't had a choice. But what will we do when we've moved beyond this structure? We've shared the warmth of this fire, felt it on our skin over the last three, four, or five years. But the dawn has come, and we are gathering our clothing to hit the trail and flow off into the world again. The fire will still be here, but it isn't ours anymore. We've done our part. We've shown others how to kindle it, how to undress to feel its warmth, and how to dance and sing in its light. The light of a new day is bright and promising, but the night will come again. And we must ask ourselves, what will we do in the darkness without the fire that has kept us warm? Without the people who we have danced with, been exposed to, seen exposed? We have to remember them, to remember each other, and remember that just because we will no longer gather around this fire does not mean that we can't meet around new sparks in the future. We're flowing out into the world, but our trails point back to this place. And that will never change. We have grown here, been shaped here, and the hands that have shaped us belong to each other. We didn't just learn how to be together. We also learned how to build fires, how to recognize the types of fires we want to be around. We've learned how to be naked, and as we move off into the days, those are the things we must remember. This was a great place to be, but there are other great places to be. Other people to get to dance with, get naked with, to get to know. And if we can remember that, 
then the night will never be frightening, although it will still be dark. And in that darkness, we will sometimes lose the path. Yesterday, some of us planted a tree and marked it with a stone that bears a Mary Oliver quote. Collectively, we decided that a question would commemorate our time together and challenge those who walked down that path after us. We echoed her when we asked in stone, what will you do with your one wild and precious life? Friends, we would like to suggest a possible answer this morning. We will start fires, strip our clothing to feel the warmth of the flames, and invite others to join us from the darkness, to learn and be safe, to change each other and to grow, while we wait for the sun and the adventures of countless tomorrows. Sometimes it's important to remember that on our last night, springing into the wee hours of the morning, this fire has been a party. <laughs> that as we stand around it now, in the present, having just shown the culmination of new dreams and strange ideas that we have grappled with throughout the night, it certainly is a celebration of the way our bodies and lives and conversations have changed. But more than anything, that celebration is not for the moment, but is an act of gratitude that becomes the daily practice of our lives moving forward, in which we live as a celebration of the fires we are building, what we choose to illuminate and bring warmth to, the act of drawing each other in, such that as the morning comes and the smoke begins to settle on our skins, the smell of life and wild things left to linger in our hair, we become conscious of the new breeze that begins to pick up around our feet, that we all feel this wind and are ready to take it along slightly different currents. Maybe we will flow together, maybe not, but we will all be uplifted, ready to follow the last sparks up as they go off into the light. So, we're all standing naked in the forest. We might be tired now, but it's all right. It's just that first degree burn. <laughs> it stings but it reminds us to look for the light, the curiosity, the warmth, and to kindle that sense of home with others, wherever we can. It's been a pleasure. Congratulations. Congratulations.